Hi, um, I'm here with Lou Ellen from the Ultimate uh, Facebook Bang & Olufsen group. Yep. So, yeah, welcome to Sounds Heavenly on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, and for those people who haven't seen the uh, the group, let's uh, see if we can find an image. Here we are. So, yeah, currently um, the biggest um, B&O fan group on Facebook, On Facebook, it is, yeah. Yeah. How, how many members? So at the moment it's about 2,200 members. Right. We're right. growing steadily but um, getting new members every day, yeah. which is always good. We'd always obviously like to improve on that if yeah. we could do. Yeah. But uh, happy with the growth so far. Um, but more importantly, the interaction mm. from, from the, the members really. Yeah. So I get to see the statistics of, of the group, where mm. where all the members are from and who, yeah. you know, who posts regularly and so on. And um, the percentage of the users is quite high in terms of what they actually post. So you, yeah. with certain groups, you might have, let's say, a thousand members, but yeah. only 20 or 30 of them post. Yeah. With ours, it, mm -hmm. everybody gets involved in the mix. Yes. So yeah. it's really quite good. You get mm -hmm. a lot of varied, um, varied enthusiast yeah. posts on there. So for new, new B&O, old, mm. older hi-fi, whatever it might be. Yeah. So where did it start out? What what was what when, when did when did you start it? So I actually started it and this is this might be a good tip if you're thinking of starting a Facebook group. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Uh, I started it as a page, not a group. Right. So unfortunately it meant that members weren't they could they could post to the page. Yeah. Um but it was it was a bit clunky and complicated to do that because right. pages are more designed for businesses rather than yeah. uh you know the enthusiast type forum type of thing mm -hmm. so um i did get about i think i got about 1500 members wow. and yeah. i had to i had to delete it and start again effectively oh, no. which was which was not ideal <laughs> um but took the plunge and yeah. uh got there in the end and yeah it's um mm -hmm. it's been really good ever since and that was a, yeah it was around probably three years ago i'd have to check right but about three years ago i started it and it's just steadily steadily climbed from there really. yeah so just looking at the stats on the page, two thousand three hundred and forty wow. as of today. So yeah, that's excellent, superb. Yeah, and I must admit it's great to see the updates every few days with a welcoming the new members and seeing you know often a big long list of people who've just joined. Yeah, and I suppose the good thing about Facebook is it, it can be very rich in content. Lots of people post pictures, videos. Um, it's not like sort of the old days where you'd have to just put a text only description of your, that's your issue right. if you. Yeah trying to solve a problem yeah so, it's, it's yeah. very quick to upload a video or some mm. photos and um, usually because of how popular Facebook mm -hmm. is you get super fast responses so in the traditional mm. sort of uh, forum style of internet banter among enthusiasts let's mm -hmm. say um, you'd have to type a, a lengthy post yeah. and then w wait for a few hours or however long it, it would be mm. for someone to come along and reply to that yeah. and the process was a lot slower um, with the Facebook groups, it's a lot more quick and snappy, yes. yeah. more more conversational. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's it's good. Yeah. And there's a subgroup for buying and selling, I think, isn't there? There is. Let's yeah. See if I can find that. So we don't we don't actually advertise anything on the on the main group. No. Um, just because we want to keep it, mm. just really keep it keep it on topic and keep it yeah. keep it clean. Uh, so we set up uh, when was it? Probably three or four four months ago. We set up a, another sister group. Yeah. Purely for buying and selling, so you can go on there, join up. You don't have to, um, you don't have to be a member of the of the main group if no. you wanted to just sell some some of your hi-fi or whatever it might be. You can join join that yeah. group and post away to your heart's content. There's no right. there's no limitations on what you can advertise. Yeah. Excellent. So that's ultimate bang and Olufsen for sale and wanted. For sale and wanted. Yeah. yeah. The other thing to to note as well is it wasn't originally called Ultimate Bang and Olufsen. Ah, no, I don't know to think what it was. It was called, which is like the clunkiest mm. name ever, Vintage Bang and Olufsen, yeah. classic for sale and wanted or right. something like this. And yeah. I wanted to start off as a, a basically a vintage B and O group yeah. where people could mm -hmm. search for rare spare parts and yeah. things like this. And mm -hmm. um, I just felt that it was a little bit convoluted the name, and I wanted yeah. again I wanted something to be short and snappy and easy to remember as yeah. well so i just thought ultimate bang and olufsen it's mm. yeah it's dead dead easy and uh, yeah. just nice and short yeah nice so, and easy for people to find yeah, so, yeah. and it pretty much mm. is what it what it says on yes. the tin really yeah yeah but 
much as we want to chat about the group, we've got something important, haven't we? We've we got have. to cover today. Yep. So uh, let's uh, show the world. For the few B&O uh, fans who've not yet heard about <laughs> this, the Butterfly TV that the yep. dealers have been talking about for months in hushed tones, it's here. Yeah. Um, Beer Vision Harmony? Beer Vision Harmony. Yeah. This is... Uh, so yeah, it's their, is this their new flagship TV, would you say? Yes, yeah, yeah. I think so, because it's coming out as a 77-inch to start with, and I think there's an 88 following yeah. on. Wow. So, yeah, this will be the the new top of the range. Uh, Rumours I'm hearing unsubstantiated of, of a smaller TV to, to follow with yeah. a different style to sit beneath it in the range. Sure. But, yeah, this is... So first brilliant. impressions then, Steve, what do you think? Wow, yeah. It's... Um, yeah, this is this is Bang & Olufsen. This is the the movement, the magic. Yeah. It's like getting yeah, sort of Beer Sound 9000 again with the the CD shuttle sliding about. That yeah, to see the speakers um, sort of as they flow and the screen rises and falls as it switches on or off. It, yeah, this is proper Beer No magic. Again, it is. I think. It is. I think they've done a good job. Yeah. I mean, it is really difficult nowadays to have to have a TV with how to say. Um, strong, strong design elements. Yeah. That that, not just obviously it's mm. it's about the picture and the performance of the TV. Yeah. But B and O, B and B and O have to have that magic. Yes. And I think they've come up with the goods on this one I personally. Think so, I think yeah. it's really really nice looking. Yeah. And I know it's sort of in its closed position. Yeah, you could sort of say, well, it doesn't hide the whole screen. Why do that? But then, it does enough. I think it sort of makes you know that there's a TV there, but it's. It high, it masks that sort of uh, sort of acre of black that would otherwise be there. That's right, but there is a reason for that as well. I don't know if if you know. Oh, I didn't. If know. you're if you're playing an audio source, mm -hmm. it 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 displays uh, partial information on the screen. Ah, right. So if you, if, I don't know, I, I've not sense. seen it, but no. I, th I imagine if you're, let's say, you're using mm -hmm. Spotify or yeah. something like that, that through the smart TV features, yeah. it will it will display the track information and so on. Right, no, that so, makes uh, sense. Yeah. 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 I've not seen that yet, but I think that would look pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, I must admit, I, being a sort of an '80s child, I prefer the version with the uh, the black fabric. I mean, this is—I I grew up it, with the era of the Beer System 3500 in sort of smoked grey and black. Yeah, and, yeah. For me, this version is the this is the the one with the you know sort of the black and grey frets. It does look proper beer, know that does, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And it reminds me of the Mondrian Bio Lab 3000. Well, oh yes, which, which we have some behind yeah. us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do like. That. So if you can imagine two of those on this yeah. side, that's pretty much uh, what yeah. you've got, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's uh, yeah, superb. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I suppose, like I say, this is classic B and O, and I, it wasn't till we started talking through and Google searching we realised just how much history there is with B and O and. TVs that are more subtle and hide themselves. So we've got now. Yeah, what have we got here? We've six thousand and two. Six. I think it's the six thousand and the six thousand and two. Somebody yeah. more knowledgeable than me will yeah. no doubt leave a comment <laughs> saying exactly what it is. Yes. Yeah. And um, I think. Um, oh, was it also the Beer Vision Capri? The, um, now. It might. Is it the, yeah. There's, I think they did a few with Capri yeah. names. There yes. was the Capri Modern and mm -hmm. a few others. But the, yeah. the TV that you can see in the in the picture there on the right yeah. is a Beer Vision Capri. Yeah, is that one of the first Beer Centers? I, I don't think know. so. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, with with the radio built into the back of it. Yeah, and then yeah, the six thousand, six thousand and two on the left, where you could sort of pull across the timbre doors and hide the uh, the screen. Yeah, and that would that would turn the screen off as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and then it didn't stop there. We've got, although I've just realised talking to you earlier, I've got the wrong picture. I thought on the left I had found a Beer Vision AV5 yeah. with the little speakers that sort of powered themselves out as you switched it on. And no, it's an Avant. That doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> Very similar design though, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and of course the new Avant with the speakers that then motor down and and outwards. Subtle, but yeah, a little bit of B and O magic there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's. I think this, the new harmony takes this up back up to the proper classic. It does. You know, level. It does. Yeah, but I think we've we've got to address the elephant in the room, which in this case is um, the LG screen. Yes. And I know I've already seen comments online with people saying actually this is 
this is just gilding the lily. It's sort of, you know, you've got an ordinary screen and b and are trying to go, hey, this is special. But actually, no, I don't, I don't agree here because let me show you why. Aston Martin Vantage, right? I reckon still one of the best British sports cars of this era. What power is it? I don't know, 600 horsepower, something like yeah. that. But oh, what power was it? Yeah, Sorry, what, yeah, yeah. Who so makes it's, the engine? Because I know you, you're a car guy as well. <coughs> yeah, it's a it's a Mercedes AMG engine. Yeah. But it doesn't stop there either because the infotainment oh. in the interior yeah. is also all Mercedes. Ah, right. So, um, see, I've not been fortunate enough to get in one yet. So yeah, I hadn't realised. No, that, neither. So. I've not yet, but no. um, I've seen them, and uh, yeah, it's all Mercedes. Yeah. Right. The, the the mechanism to uh, control the stereo and everything yeah. is all. Yeah, it's all Mercedes design, but yeah. um, I guess because similar to being our Aston Martin are a mm. small company, yeah, it makes sense to let someone do that for them that's very yes. good at it. Mm. They can concentrate on the bits that they're good at, chassis design yeah. and mm. braking and suspension and everything. Yeah, and I don't think it's any less an Aston Martin as a result. No, not at all. No. Not at all. And I've got another motoring example for you. I was very pleased um, a few months ago to get an invite to the launch of the Lamborghini Urus. Have you placed I'm, your order yet, Steve? <laughs> I'm just saving the pennies. I'm yeah. onto my second little piggy bank full of <laughs> coppers. But yeah, one day. But um, lovely, lovely car. And as an engineer, I did like this. Look under the bonnet, look at the ABS controller, and it's got the Audi rings. Yeah. So is it any less a Lamborghini? Probably more a Lamborghini because it's got brakes you can trust. That's true. From yeah, a company you can trust. And <laughs> yeah, leave Lamborghini to do the uh, the special bit that and yeah I think although that's a bit of a long preamble round I think this is what B&O it is. Is, is really it is. doing that, and a, com um, a small company like B&O they just can't do the software development that you need no. these days for all the all the integration mm. of you know the um, smart features and everything yeah I know they've, they've tried in the past haven't they with mixed yes. results and yeah. perhaps it is better mm. to let, you know let other people step in on, yeah. that, on that side of things. So yeah, with this, I think um, looking at B&O's press release, they're providing the, the sound, the processing, the wiser outputs for the BLab speakers, and multi-room compatibility, and then LG will do their web OS that will yeah. drive the pictures, the smart apps, um, and yeah, you get the best of both worlds, I suppose, like your Lamborghini with Audi parts, or your Aston Martin with the Mercedes parts. Yep. So. Yeah, I must admit, I'm, I didn't manage to get to the Milan Design Week to see the Harmony in person, but I'm looking forward to it. I think, um, yeah. And when's it launched? Is it October? October, yeah. yeah. So I think early suggestions are about €18,000 for yeah. the 77-inch, which I'm guessing £15,000, pounds roughly double the price of the 77-inch LG C9 panel that yeah. it's based on. But, yeah, there's there's easily double the TV there yeah when you start to look at the the movement because the screen the this I think it's the best bit the screen rises as you switch it on so um, if we go um, back to the let's find the um, the image of the the panel so in its closed position on the floor stand the screen this is almost like the the big beer vision fours from a few years ago with the plasmas yeah. that would um sit low on the floor until they were needed and then the screen rises up and the the speakers rotate here so it the whole thing becomes a sort of fluid movement yeah and i understand it's the same with the wall bracket as well the, the the tv will physically rise on the bracket as the speakers turn i think that'll look brilliant oh so, yeah yeah so yeah, just to be honest, I, th I think this is just what we need from B&O. This is this this is what they they should be doing to get the magic back absolutely. into television. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'd personally like to see a, a slimmed down version of it with a smaller screen, maybe a fifty five inch or something like that. Yeah, that would be nice. I don't know how well that would work with the proportion of the speakers because I suppose with a seventy seven inch, you've got a good sized speaker panel that yeah. um, you can get sort of good base response out of um, that's true actually yeah. yeah but yeah it'd be interesting to see what they come out with next mm. um, but yeah certainly I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this in in the, in the flesh in October yeah and um, um, and when you want to connect your old Biogram to it Steve will oh, sell yes. your cable quite happily <laughs> yes um, 
we'll do the the shameless plug um hopefully if you're new to the channel um this this will be something new for you um what i do as my day job when i'm not talking rubbish on the internet is um i run sounds heavenly so i make all the cables for the bno systems and yeah the um plans are already underway to get the connections into the beer vision harmony so that on the launch date whatever device you want to use with it whether it's a, a 1960s bno turntable or um with the thing the strangest request we had was a meridian Salus um this music server with a giant screen yeah um yeah we've got those working into bno speakers um we've put beer lab 90s in recording studios and all sorts of weird and wonderful setups so yeah basically anything you want to do with your bno gear yeah that's steve's like involved man. in connecting yeah. it yeah i've um, asked him for help lots of times actually <laughs> And yeah, of course, the main, the main uh, thing we want to mention is before we go is the ultimate Bang and Olufsen group. Um, if you if you're on Facebook, um, just search Ultimate Bang and Olufsen. Yeah, you'll find the group straight away. We're a very, we're actually a very friendly group. We always we always welcome every new member. Yeah. So every new member gets tagged in a post and welcomed personally by, by me. Yeah. The the group uh, the group founder. Yeah. Um, but yeah, come and come along and uh, and say hello, and yeah. uh, we'll be happy to happy to get you in the mix. Brilliant. Well, thank you for joining me, Llewellyn. No problem. Thanks for inviting me in, Steve. Okay. Cheers. We we'll look forward to seeing you on Ultimate Bang and Olufsen on Facebook. We will. 